what might be their last move prior to pitchers and catchers reporting, which is the unofficial official start of spring training. The Yankees have claimed infielder Jordan Groshans off of waivers from the Miami Marlins and have DFA'd left-handed reliever slash starter Matt Crook. You are Locked On Yankees, your daily New York Yankees podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Yankees, which is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making us your first listen every day. I'm Stacey Gotsoulias. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. New customers join today and you'll get $150 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. With me, as always, is my producer, Steve Granato. Steve, what's going on today? Hey, what's up, Stacey? We are... One day away from pitchers and catchers reporting tomorrow and also happy Valentine's Day. Uh, thanks for clicking on the show today, guys. Uh, we have a, a, a bunch of stuff we need to get to here today on the major league front. Pitchers and catchers have reported elsewhere, not in Tampa just yet, but New Jersey's are being not literally, but figuratively ripped we're going to talk about that a little bit later on in the show. We also have Bryce Patterick from Locked On Rangers to chat with us uh, later on in the show. Of course, the Texas Rangers, not the New York Rangers. Uh, but he's going to be with us uh, in the second segment of today's episode. But first, Stacey, the Yankees did make what might be their last move prior to pitchers and catchers reporting, which is the unofficial official start of spring training. The Yankees have claimed infielder Jordan Groshans off of waivers from the Miami Marlins and have DFA'd left-handed reliever slash starter Matt Crook. He has been placed, uh, he has been DFA'd. So we'll see how that progresses. Obviously, <laughs> the Yankees have a week until February 20th to figure out what's going to go on there, whether they're going to trade him, whether they're going to go ahead and place him on waivers and hope that he passes and then keep him in the system and send him back to Scranton. A lot of things here. A lot of things here. Stacy, your reaction to this claim and this DFA. Maybe, again, their last move of the unofficial offseason. Well, I was surprised that something happened because, you know, we've been complaining about how quiet things are leading into pitchers and catchers. Um, but we've mentioned Matt Crook so many times on the show. So when I saw that he was DFA'd, I, I thought to myself, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> because just because we talk about him so much and you know he's one of those lefty guys that we always talk about so i was kind of surprised yeah i think what, what first thing i saw well for, first thing i thought when i saw the move i went one i didn't think too much about the jordan groshans front but I, yeah my brain obviously went to matt crook having covered him and knowing him and he's a really great guy really nice kid but yeah that was the first thing i was like man that's a bummer that's a super yeah. bummer on the Yankees front, it was kind of clear how they felt about him last season. Time and time again, he was kind of passed up from being called up, right? Like it was like yep. he could have been called here. He could have been called there. Um, look, his walk rate went up last season in Scranton. All his other numbers look pretty darn good. His swing and miss is still there. His ability to limit runs was there. He was getting the strikeouts. But he started walking guys a lot more last season. And I think that's what uh, kind of worried the Yankees a little bit. Obviously, he had been starting in the past. He had got pushed to the reliever side of things. So, look, I think I said it way back in, like, December when we were talking about moves. And if you've been in every day and you've been listening since then, man, more power to you. You've, you've <laughs> stuck with us the whole offseason. We appreciate that. But when we were talking about it, I think – he was on my short list as one of the guys that I anticipated that might get DFA'd this off season. Mm. Uh, that just seemed like the likeliest fit that they would go in different directions because if it didn't happen last year, they went the, a lot of free agency route, right. Uh, to try and add guys to the 40 and they didn't take Matt Crook and you kind of saw the writing on the wall a little bit. Um, this doesn't mean that Matt Crook's time and the organization is done. I don't know your thoughts on him being claimed, Stacy. He's kind of hit and miss. I mean, if it comes up across a team, especially this week, like this is like the right week for Matt Crook. If he's trying to leave the Yankees, this would be the week to do it because you're starting to see, okay, he's not going to be available. He's not going to be available. We need, okay, we could use a lefty here because you're starting yeah. to see your guys right now. Right. That's true. This, this seems to be the best week for him to be picked up, like his best chance. Um, 
but will he? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, because he's he's stuck between, like, he can start. He clearly can start. He yeah. did it for years, and then last season was when they just flipped the switch and put him on the relief side. Again, it seems like those walks were part of the reason why. Uh, to the same conversation here, like switching it back to the Yankees front here, we're going to talk about Jordan Groshans in a second, who he is and all that. But when it comes to what they've set up, and this is what I've been preaching, right? They've set themselves up better this spring training than they did last spring training when it comes to left-handed relief options. Oh yeah. You know, it's better having a few than just one. Pretty much. Like I, I believe, don't quote me on this. I believe Matt Crook made the, the club out of spring. I feel like he did, uh, mm. but was DFA or not DFA was optioned back down rather quickly thereafter. They, you remember the Yankees made a couple of moves here, like in the first week last yeah. uh, like opening week, they made a couple of moves. That was like the flurry all conversation was surrounding that. And they also took a really long time to announce their opening day roster last year. They were one of the last teams to do it. But again, yeah, they've set themselves up better. They got Nick Ramirez. They got Caleb Ferguson. They got Victor Gonzalez. Obviously, Wandy's been subtracted. But this, I, 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 it didn't seem like Matt Crook had a chance of making the Major League Club. Yeah, you just reminded me that they did wait pretty long for the roster because I remember you were waiting for it. You're like, when is it coming out? I remember that now. <laughs> yeah, it was tough. Um, again, they have until February 20th. So February 20th, he's going to have to clear waivers, get a trade, something like that. So we'll we'll let you know in a week. Uh, so by next next Tuesday. But Stacey, Jordan Groshans. So I don't know. Jordan Groshans, obviously, throughout his his career, had a lot of hype surrounding him. He was a first rounder. He was a 12th overall pick back in 2018. He was a Toronto Blue Jays top prospect. He got traded to the Marlins in 2022. And last season with Triple A Jacksonville just really didn't work out for him. Only slugged 330 last season uh which was nine points lower than his on base percentage like things have really gone downhill for jordan groshans who was like i think may have gotten as high as six in the blue jay system maybe even in the miami system not 100 percent on that but look there is still some baseball in there hopefully but it doesn't seem like what do i say on the show first call jordan groshans is not first call i don't think no i don't think so either um it, but it also feels like the Yankees are picking up these guys and then either letting them go or I don't know. I don't know what they're doing. I don't, <laughs> I almost throwing feel like everything this, at the wall. Yeah. Yeah. But it also in some weird way feels like they're setting up for something else, but I just don't know what it is or what it could possibly be. I don't know. This seems like an odd move to me because they, I feel like they don't, they have enough backup infielders on the 40. You, I don't know. I would yeah, I mean, they obviously have Oswald and Oswaldo who need to get some playing time. They obviously have Jorby Vivas, who they made a made move uh, for earlier this offseason in the Trey Sweeney deal with the Dodgers. But when it comes to the corner infield, they didn't have a lot there. Mm. And that's what Jordan Groshans kind of offers. Not on the third base side. Obviously, we talked a lot about the third base side, but they don't really have a true first baseman backup for Anthony Rizzo. It's, right. It's that's DJ. True. It's yeah. DJ. And if DJ is not hitting then it's Oswaldo. Mm. And if Oswaldo is doing like 2023 is doing. Or Austin Wells. I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but that's still, you know, that's still a project, right? right. Jordan Groshans isn't necessarily a project for first base. So I, I think that's where their heads was at. They're like, we could yeah. use a triple a guy. Yeah. Yeah. On well, I mean, 40 yeah. At first base. Yeah. I mean, if you see Jordan Groshans starting at first base for, you know, more than one time at some point in the season, then, you know, something really bad happened with the Yankees like that. It's that kind of a move. You're not don't expect to see <laughs> that much of him, if anything. Yeah, kind of kind of Greg allen -y, at least in the use case, like if he even is on the roster on the major league roster, you don't anticipate him being used in an everyday role. Yeah, I, I think it obviously boils down to health for Rizzo and DJ, but as far as Oswaldo is concerned, I mean, of course, health always, but more so for Oswaldo Cabrera, you're like, mm, it's going to be performance based here, right? Like, it, like it would be like Jordan Groshans is tearing it up in AAA, and Oswaldo Cabrera is very much not in the majors, and so there's going to be over a long period of time there would be that shift, but I think a lot would have to happen before that happened, right? So that's that's kind of where I'm at with it. It's a little more backup. You hope that Crook doesn't get claimed and you can just keep him in the system. That's yeah, 
Yeah, I would like to see him remain in the system and get a chance because you had mentioned how there were times he was passed up and it was almost like he was the pitching version of Floreal there for a while. A there, little there. bit. A Less little bit. Upside, but yes. yes, I get where you're coming from. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not the same. Not the same hype, obviously. And I like right. again, I really like Matt Crook. I think he's a good dude. Um, I have nothing but glowing things to say about Matt Crook. Uh, anyway, uh, that's the move, and hopefully we helped you understand it a little bit better. Of course, again, <laughs> I think it might be the last move before pitchers and catchers. Don't quote me on that because something could happen today as you're watching this episode. But anyway, uh, don't forget to leave your questions for Fan Mail Friday. Reply to that pinned comment here on the YouTube side. Join the Locked on Yankees Insiders Club. Guys, I say this every day. You already know all this stuff. I don't need to say it again. Link in the episode description, 14-day free trial. All right, we have Bryce Patrick from Locked on Rangers to chat about uh, Rangers versus Yankees, who's more favored? Who has bigger issues? That's coming up next. Get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because right now new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 if your bet wins. Bet on all your favorite NBA players and teams with quick bets, live same game parlays, exclusive props, and more. You can bet on how many threes guys will hit. You can bet on, I don't know, I guess over and unders, right, with basketball. And you can also do parlays where you can bet on whether someone will score 10 or 20 or even 30 points in a game. And because we're a baseball podcast, your 2024 Yankees are at plus 900 to win the World Series behind the Dodgers, who are at plus 1,200, while the Yankees are at plus 450 to win the American League right behind the Astros. And hey, if you want to bet on Aaron Judge winning an MVP, you can do that too. So just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and shoot your shot. FanDuel, official partner of the NBA. Back now on today's Locked On Yankees. Hey, don't forget to check out the 24-7 streaming YouTube channel, Locked On Sports Today. You're looking for the top stories from spring training. Definitely check it out every day, 24-7. That's called Locked On Sports Today. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about this jersey fiasco later on in the show. But first, we have Bryce Patrick joining us from Locked On Rangers, talking a little bit about the similarities between these two clubs. That's going to be coming up right now, so take a listen. Now, it seems like every single projection for the standings for this year, whether it's, Pe is it Petcoa, Petoka? I, I, sw I swear. Pakoda. Pakoda. That's what it is. I, I read it as Petcoa when I first initially read it, and it has stuck there ever since, and I have been <laughs> maintaining that mistake for uh, years and years to come. Or whether it's Fangraph's projections, uh, they have the Yankees finishing atop the AL East and as one of the best teams in the American League. How confident are y'all that the Yankees can come out of the American League and get back to the World Series for the first time since, what is it, 2009? It's been so long, I've just forgotten the Yankees actually used to win games. <laughs> All right, calm Weird down over there. <laughs> Weird that you bring up Pakoda, Bryce. Stacey, we just talked about this the other day on Locked On Yankees. I'm not putting so much stock into Pakoda. Last season... Pakoda didn't have the Rangers making the postseason. It had the Yankees nine games over the Toronto Blue Jays in the American League East. <sighs> so take all of those projections with like the largest grain of salt you can possibly muster. Yeah. But that being said, I don't have the Yankees as the favorite favorite in the American League East. Stacy, I know we've dabbled in this, but I don't think you have them either. No. No, I don't think they're going to be bad. I just think they're not going to be as far ahead of every other team as the projections think they're going to be. <laughs> yeah, we, we have discussed the almighty Baltimore Orioles uh, on a handful of occasions, and I'm sure we'll continue to discuss them uh, throughout the season and with the addition of Corbin Burns to that team and everybody who else is still waiting in Norfolk to, to add to that roster. Um, and who's waiting in double A and single A and low A and all the way down to the complex league. Like that system just keeps getting better seemingly, weirdly enough. And uh, yeah, I, we are very much screaming to the heavens to not take the Baltimore Orioles lightly because last season, I don't think, I've seen a lot of those players now in the majors, it's all in triple A. 
I don't think this is a flash in the pan, man. I think Baltimore is going to be pretty legit for a while now. Mm-hmm. Uh, like John Smoltz, the Baltimore Orioles, John Smoltz's favorite team. I don't know if y'all remember of game three, while the Rangers were stomping the Orioles in what was a sweep, just the final three innings was John Smoltz giving this glowing eulogy about how actually the Orioles are, you know, so set up for the future. They're such a great team. Everything's so amazing about the Orioles while they're getting canned in what is going to be a sweep. And so Rangers fans and myself have always, you know, held that over John Smoltz as the Orioles are John Smoltz's favorite team. I think it was just him hating on the Rangers. It was just a lot of nonsense. Even the, when the Diamondbacks series, when the Rangers were like an inning away, John Smoltz was like, well, this Diamondbacks team, you know, they've got a really bright future. Everyone's like, all right, John Smoltz, can you just shut up for <laughs> about five minutes? But um, I'm curious, what what is it that these projections are liking about the Yankees that you guys are more skeptical of? I think it's the injury stuff, yeah. right? I think it's it's the uh, we're we're still you know a bit PTSD shell shocked <laughs> from last season, and, and it was checks watch right around this time last year that we started going, hmm, man, a lot of these injuries are popping up, and hmm, he's supposed to be back by now, and how long did they say? And uh oh, <laughs> wait a second, oh, it's the All Star break. <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah, I think that's what's really driving us is, like I mentioned a little bit, uh, Stacey, I know you can go into this further, of the depth is better. I wouldn't say it's best, right. especially, I know we're going to get into this, the pitching front, but especially on the rotation side, like one or two injuries and you're you're already going, uh-oh, like <laughs> Luke Weaver and Clayton Beater are now getting regular every five days right now. So it's it's a little... A little touch and go when it comes to pitching, and and we both kind of pontificated that uh, that's a, that's a recurring word now apparently on the show. Pontificated that uh, they might be if they're in the running slash near the running, uh, making a move at the deadline for another arm. Yeah, yeah, I can totally see that happening. But the thing you have to remember with the projections is they don't take injuries into account, which is why the Yankees looked so good last year, because if no one was injured on the Yankees and maybe they had a couple of little injuries and, you know, maybe some guys made the IL that was going to be a really good team (laughs) before those guys all got injured. I mean, if you're starting the season with three fifths of your rotation on the IL, you're not going to finish with a good year because you're going to start off slow. So those that's why the projections are looking the way they're looking because they're looking at the roster, looking at how these guys have done and taking it that way. Um, so again, they have a chance to do really well, but you know, there's a lot of luck involved in that too. Cause you have to have guys doing the right thing at the right time and not getting injured. So. Especially like in this conversation, top of mind is Texas, right? Like, the 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 roller coastery 2023 that you went down. I mean, there were, we were talking about you, mm-hmm. like we were talking about you on Locked On Yankees. We barely <laughs> see each other, and we're going like, what in the world's going on in the AL West, and what in the world's <laughs> going on with the Texas Rangers? Like, you were so I don't know if lucky is the right word, but for lack of a better word, <sighs> lucky that you were <clears throat> able to make it through that kind of stuff to where the Yankees were on the complete opposite end of that, where it's like, okay, it's time for so-and-so to step up. And then they didn't like, that's the flip side of the coin is you got the guys stepping up and the Yankees did not have that at all. Yeah. Yeah, It was the weirdest. Like it's, it's hard to say like the Rangers were lucky when you get six starts of Jacob deGrom. Like it's hard to say you had a a good injury like season. And especially when you missed like 40 games of your star shortstop and Corey Seager, but they kind of did like they got injuries, obviously, but they had the depth to sustain it. And the guys who stepped up to, you know, come in for those injuries, like Ezekiel Duran was on fire for the first half of the year. And Robot the Rangers, Yankees. Oh, yeah, you know, former, <laughs> former Yankee, great. Him and Josh Smith, both stepping up great for the <laughs> Rangers where they needed the most. Um not so much Glenn Otto that uh, that ship has sailed, but uh, Trevor <laughs> Hover is still waiting to be the uh, fourth impact of a trade that hurt my feelings so badly for my large adult son, Joey Gallo. Thanks again to Bryce Patterick. If you want to check out the entire conversation, I will leave the channel linked in the episode description. It's a full half hour show between Stacy, myself and Bryce. So we talk a lot about that, uh, about more things about Rangers Yankees, all that stuff. So go check it out. Again, it's in the episode description. All right. Jerseys. We're talking about them because things are going on and it's not great. We're going to talk about that next.
If you're looking for tickets for just about anything, check out the app Game Time. Steve used Game Time basically all last baseball season and still uses them for hockey tickets, and he absolutely loves how easy it is. It's easier than dealing with Ticketmaster, where they have all those hidden fees, which is frustrating every time. Game Time is the fastest and easiest way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and shows near you. There's no baseball for just a couple more months, but you still have hockey and basketball. Game Time has deals on tickets right up to just moments before your event starts and even an hour after it starts. It's the place to find last minute seats. Find exclusive exclusive flash deals and sponsored deals on tickets for basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. Back here on Locked On Yankees. Stacy, I kind of want to get everydayers' opinions on this. We know that everydayers are the ones that stick on like for the majority of the show. We've kind of been doing this recently where we're talking about bigger like baseball stories in our third segments of the show. Uh, if you were a fan's last season, then very clearly you know that we usually use these in season to preview the very next game, which we still plan on doing. But I just want to know what people think about us doing these kind of broader scope baseball things, not just Yankee specific. So let us know in the comments. I'm just curious how you guys feel about that just because we have unintentionally started to do that here <laughs> as we get closer to spring training. And that's yeah. what we're going to do today. Stacy, these jerseys. So Nike quote yeah. unquote, unquote <laughs> is making these jerseys so if you didn't see on twitter i'm gonna leave another thing linked in the episode description uh i forget who wrote it it is uh, usa today it's a usa today article you don't need a subscription but uh yeah i kind of put it all together the jerseys don't look good obviously yeah. teams are showing up to spring the jerseys are in lockers and they kind of look a little rough they switched people who are making them yes it has the nike swoosh on it but fanatics is now making the on-field jersey of major league baseball which i didn't even realize was going to happen this season um stacy these don't look very good they, i don't yeah. i don't think they look like oh my gosh like terrible right. like splotchy and stained or anything like nothing crazy like that but just the quality very clearly looks like it's taking a dip yeah um i can't remember who tweeted it out but someone put up miles michaelis's jersey and i thought it was a t-shirt <laughs> yeah i legitimately look... thought it was a t-shirt and then i looked at the actual tweet and i thought to myself wait that's an that's a jersey that's i also didn't understand at first that uh nike is i guess paying to have the swoosh on the jersey made by fanatics like that's what's happening yes. right yes Interesting. Uh, the tweet came from uh, Jeff Jones at JM Jones. Again, so are they leasing way. space on the jersey for the swoosh? Like, is that what it is? Is that is that what we're? I don't know. I don't is know. That that's kind of what it great is. Great question. Like, I don't know. I don't. They don't um, look they good also, at all, though. <laughs> also saw some tweets. Uh, Bobby Mullins uh, tweeted out again. This is on the uh, in the uh, the article. But yeah, the tweet of the Mariners ones. The Mariners ones look tough. There's something. There's something in the stitching. Mm. that looks odd again this is gonna go check go read the article it's you don't really have to read just scroll it's a, just a bunch of pictures but <laughs> there's like a, a a stitch line at like the waistline of where it tucks into the jersey as well i you saw know. it like you can see it on the george kirby jersey you can see it on the miles michaelis is one like those are the ones that kind of made the headline grabs uh there was also another one people were talking about the arc of the last name oh yeah way harsher like Michael way more name, arched you know michaelis's name isn't that long and the arch is like roots Alanix's old jersey used to be for the expos like it's completely yeah. like a total arch and it doesn't need to be that way it's just in the the font seems small it doesn't seem i don't know it doesn't seem right at all and there are also complaints about the fit Mm. apparently they don't aren't comfortable either like the players are putting them on and they're saying that the pants are wrong like they <laughs> so if you don't know about baseball pants in major league baseball boy howdy am i here to tell you about them but th the pants are like super tuned per player 
Like right. they they are like like tailored, you know, like you would tailor a suit pant. Like they the waist, the cuff, all of it that is tailored per player, and they specifically have their own pants. Like it's not just they just throw it into the washing machine and oh, who's a large, you know, like, <laughs> like that. They are all tailored specific to the players, and apparently they are not comfortable. They like the seams are off and like all this stuff. Like I don't know what Major League Baseball is going to have to do something about this, right? Because like this, yeah. the players' union is very much going to complain about this. This is reminding me of Yankee fans. Older Yankee fans will remember this, but there was um, an episode of Seinfeld when George was working for the Yankees and he suggested that they change the uniform to, was it wool? And they all shrunk and they had, uh, I think they had Phil Rizzuto doing the play-by-play saying like, you know, they're running out there like penguins because they couldn't run in the uh, uniform. So yeah, that's what I'm picturing right now. Like I'm picturing these guys, like or even the guys behind the scenes who do the laundry. <laughs> oh, they would yes, the clubbies one hundred. I haven't heard any clubbies speak. I haven't seen anything about clubbies, but the clubbies would be the first ones to know, right? Like yeah. they would have gotten these. And like, look, I love clubbies. They do some of the hardest work in professional baseball. They do so much work that is so unnoticed. Uh, those guys talk like I, I've always had a clubby that's just like not afraid to make their uh, opinions known about things like that because they deal with a lot of junk. They deal with a lot of annoying, bad stuff. Uh, but, the you know, and honestly, I haven't come across a bad, bad clubby either. I've loved every clubby that I've had to be a part of uh, or had to work with. Uh, but, yeah, there a lot of them would. I got to imagine the conversation in clubhouses right now throughout spring is all about these. And I'm sure the club is like, yeah, dude, I don't know. These are bad. Like I got to imagine they're all saying that right now. Well, I'm trying to, I'm looking it up because I'm trying to see, you know how they posted the Yankees new road uniform without the white the piping and everything. Yeah. And I or was trying to, are. yeah, I was trying to see if something was screwy about <laughs> that Jersey as well, but I don't see anything. Yeah, the the only thing we the only thing we saw of that was the rendering of it. Like we saw like the the what's going to be in like the media guide, right? Like that, not yeah. the actual. Well, no, there was actual. There was an actual picture from like a factory of of what the jersey oh, would I look like, and I'm trying to find that picture on Twitter because I'm trying to see if something was off. But no one mentioned anything about it looking wonky, other than it just looking strange without the white piping. So that'll be interesting yeah. to see. But you know, the Yankees, it's not. Um, they don't have the names on the back, so that's not going to be an issue um unless the new york looks weird but i don't know it didn't seem weird in that one picture so maybe they'll be okay it might just be the teams that have names on the back where the where the art the art letters are going to be odd but i so don't understand that of them. <laughs> 28 yeah. Teams. <laughs> yeah i don't understand that stitch though that odd i, I, I let alone yeah, that lo- the stitch around the like near the waistline. Like it, you know, because really I, I remember those newer jerseys that came out a few years ago where they had um the pinstripes went down to a certain point and then there was a flap where it was just white, but that's all the way down at the bottom because you're sticking your jersey into your pants so you wouldn't see it. I don't know why they would have a stitch so far up. That's <laughs> what's fanatics so doing. Strange. Again, yeah. go look at um also just the quality of the numbers and lettering just look way lower. Like they look like the ones that you buy when you're like, well, this one's a hundred dollars cheaper. Uh-huh. Right. When you're like, well, I'm not gonna buy the super authentic, like the Nike cool base one that has the stitch and everything, like an official seal and all that. I was like, gonna say they're oh, not I'm wearing get- authentic jerseys, they're wearing the other ones. <laughs> They're wearing the other the, the they're wearing the other ones. The ones that are on sale on Father's Day, like yeah. on MLB.com dot slash shop or whatever. And yeah, they're wearing the ones that they send to uh you know, no offense, but the ones that they send to third world countries when teams, you know, you think a team's gonna make the Super Bowl, but they don't. And it's like championship shirts that they send off, like, you know, or the Patriots 18 and 0 t shirts that all those countries got. It's kind of like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, hopefully not to that level. I mean, again, we only have pictures of them. They don't look great in pictures and by the players. But themselves. hey, if they're compl- yeah, if they're complaining that much about it, there is something really wrong with it. And you don't want your players uncomfortable when they play. That's just that's a nightmare. They got to fix yeah. this before the season starts. The only thing I will say about this here to wrap it up is don't give Chris Sale a pair of scissors. I was just going to say when you were saying that players in the beginning of the show when you were saying that players were kind of I was like <laughs> just don't, don't show them don't show don't show chris sale just get it fixed before you don't want to chris start his season. raves tenure off like that you don't just let, take all scissors out of the clubhouse 
Um, anyway, again, check the episode description. We'll have the link. Uh, it'll have all the pictures that you need on there. Just go take a look for yourselves. It is kind of bizarre. Uh, anyway, all right, that's going to do it for today's episode of Locked on Yankees. I'm Steve Granato. <laughs> and I'm Stacey Gutsulius. We will see you tomorrow.